All right, here's a few news stories that I thought were interesting. So the European Union, or perhaps the UK, but I think it's the whole European Union, declared that all future mobile devices must have USB-C ports to try to stop the endless proliferation of different charging cables we all have to have. So the iPhone's going to have USB-C, but um, while obeying the letter of the law, Apple has violated the spirit the same way they always do. So that even though you have, oh, here, let me turn on the projector here. Um, even though you have USB-C, you have to buy Apple's special cable for USB-C. Uh, this is one of the nasty things about USB-C. Um, USB-C has many different cables with different functions that all look the same and will all interoperate. And in the early versions, it was so bad, they would even like catch fire if you chose the wrong USB-C cable. And this has hurt me at home. I bought three or four chargers thinking the chargers weren't working because uh, some USB-C cables will charge and others won't. It is very annoying. And I'm personally very offended because fiber optics had the same problem and they solved it by just adopting a color code. Orange for multi-mode, yellow for single mode, and aqua for another version. So by using colors, you can tell which fiber optic cable you're using, even though there are many of them that look the same, but the industry has not adopted any standard for USB-C. So you'll have a bunch of cables that look exactly the same, some of which work for all purposes, some of which won't work for charging and so on. So uh, USB-C seems to be a very unfortunate standard for us all to settle on, uh, where it's gonna drive us all nuts trying to figure out which cable is right. But that is a thing to know. If your USB-C is not working, just try a different cable that looks exactly the same, and it might work. So um, I got a bivalent booster about six months ago. A lot of Americans did, although not very many. And now um, the government is deciding that since most Americans didn't bother to get the booster because they just got tired of COVID shots, they're probably just not going to bother uh, sending out producing more bivalent valent boosters or rolling them out. But in fact, the current situation is there's a bunch of old bivalent boosters and they're just going to go bad. So they're trying to decide whether to give it to vulnerable people or not. Um, you know, it's uh, America's facing a situation sort of like China after making a big deal about COVID. Now we're totally ignoring it. And uh, the people who are immunocompromised are sort of just getting abandoned. Anyway, um, so... There's a so-called disinformation committee now in the U.S. Congress, and they are trying to decide what schools have been doing um, and trying to stop college courses that talk about disinformation on the grounds that they discriminate against conservatives, which is something we've been hearing ever since Trump because uh, Trump lied so much and the conservative press lied so much that a whole lot of mainstream educational and news resources just started calling everything they said lies and occasionally were wrong about, say, things like Hunter Biden's laptop and the, um, the theory that COVID came from a lab, both of which were roundly dismissed as total lies and turned out not to be total lies. So anyway, uh, we can expect, as Ron DeSantis is the leader here, totally limiting what education institutions can do and medical professionals in Florida. Um, and we can expect a whole lot more of that from Congress. So as you probably have seen, all these chat GPT-like models that are artificial intelligent that create text tend to hallucinate, which is they tend to just make up things, lie, spin fantasy stories, make up false references. Um, they don't because the problem is they don't understand what they're saying. They don't know truth from falsity. They just take this bunch of training data, <coughs> which includes typically all the pages from Reddit or something, a fairly unreliable source, and they just repeat stuff they saw in the training data without understanding it. So often they say crazy things. And so uh, anyway, Alpaca is a small AI language that Stanford put up, and they put up a web interface to it, and they discovered two things. First, that it produced an awful lot of low-quality answers that were unreliable and confusing, and what they call hallucinatory, and that it was costing them a lot of money to run the public one, so they took it down. You can still download the code and run it on your own device. The point is, it's a really small uh, generative uh, text AI. You can run it on a Raspberry Pi or a Pixel smartphone or a computer and uh, generate your own low-quality uh, guesses at text, but they're not going to bother to donate Stanford server time to make it easy for you to do it for free. Hello, Yuri. So the uh, vulnerability came out a few days ago 
uh, that an Android phone, when you snipped images, it was not actually deleting the part of the image you redacted. It was just putting a mark to terminate the file there, but still containing the old data in the file, so you could easily recover it. And in the last day or two, people have reported that the same thing is true of Windows 10 and 11 snipping tool. They say, which is a tool a lot of my students use to make screenshots to turn in your project. They say, if you take a screenshot and then cut out part of it, it's still saving the old data and you can recover it. So that's very interesting. It would be fun to try. Um, so it's a warning that uh, if you try to redact an image, it is a whole lot harder than you think. There have been many, many failed redactions in the past, from people putting black blocks on PDFs that don't hide the text, to people pixelating or blurring things, when it turns out that with the use of an AI tool, you can recover the text behind it. Uh, you know, redacting an image turns out to be a whole lot harder than it seems at first uh, look. So, uh, the, now you have been offered the ability to have an AI clone. These guys will give you a free clone of yourself, this company called In With AI, a personalized chatbot. I don't know how it works. I guess you have to give it some data of your text. I'm not sure. But they claim you can make a clone of yourself, and then you can put it online, and then everybody can talk to your clone. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could clone myself and put up a help page where every student can ask for help all the time and get stupid wrong answers for an AI instead of getting stupid wrong answers straight from me. So uh, I don't know if that's going to work. That sounds kind of bogus to me. But anyway, it might be fun to try and see how it works. I don't really understand how it's going to get enough text to, to speak in your voice, unless you have an awful lot of text online uh, attributed to you. So the, the high winds we had the last day or two have been knocking down a tree on campus, knocking down power lines everywhere, and blowing the windows out of the high rises downtown. Several of them had uh, windows failing and falling down, on, so they had to keep cordoning off blocks. Nobody got hurt, but there were glasses falling from a high height, which is, of course, not safe. Uh, so it shows that the building standards downtown at the Millennium Tower and the Salesforce Tower and so on are not up to this kind of weather, which I think is because this kind of weather is relatively unprecedented. I read somewhere this is the 12th atmospheric river this year, or something like that. Um, the climate change is really undeniable. In, in San Francisco, it's very clear that we're getting strange storms we never used to get, as we've disrupted the standard weather patterns of the planet. So Panera Bread will use Amazon's biometric where they scan your palm. You can register your palm and you can use it to pay for your food at Panera Bread. Um, I haven't heard anybody else using palm scanning instead of fingerprinting or facial recognition, which people are using. It is a thing to know and you might want to try it out to see. You see, it's they, they like it because it's zero contact. You hover your palm over the reader and it reads your palm and they regard it as less intrusive than a fingerprint or something. Uh, various people are complaining that uh, they really shouldn't have your palm image and they shouldn't put it in the cloud, but but they are. And uh, so biometrics are, of course, have the advantage that you can't forget your card. Um, the disadvantage is you can't change it if it gets compromised. So anyway, um, it's an option. You can try it if you go to Panera. So Finland has been the, declared the world's happiest country for several years in a row, and now they are having a chance for some 10 people to get a free trip to Finland where they will teach you how to be happy. So that's a thing to think about. Um, they claim to have a, uh, a skill that can be learned to make you happy, where you just sound sort of like typical uh, self-help stuff, health and balance, nature and lifestyle, everyday activities, food and well-being. They, they claim that that by improving the way you think and your attitude, you can be happier, which I imagine is probably true. And uh, certainly, America is not that high. I think America is like 15 on the list of the happiest. Here's the happiest countries. Finland way at the top, Denmark, Iceland, and uh, United States down here at 15th, and the UK down here at 19th. So not too bad on world standards, but still quite a bit less happy. The United States is 6.89 on what I think is a 10-point scale, and Finland is 7.8, so... I think this is probably no surprise to any American. We, we work really hard and have a sort of stressful society, and a lot of people have unhappy uh, home life and family life here and stuff, and a lot of people have trouble paying their rent. So there's certainly plenty of reasons why a lot of Americans are probably not as happy as they could be. Anyway, um, 
So Hyundai is promising to stop using touchscreen controls for important activities in a car. This is a really big deal because operating a touch screen in a car means you have to look at the screen, navigate menus, it's like a cell phone, and studies have shown that people who are using their cell phone while driving have an enormously high chance of having an accident. Using your cell phone to text is more dangerous than being drunk. It's very likely to cause a crash because it takes your attention off the road and you're looking at your phone, clicking on a menu, trying to type something out, and that turns out to be very dangerous. And they say old-fashioned buttons like this, where you just have a mechanical button you press, are much safer to use in a car. And so Hyundai has decided to move away from the touchscreen and just have real mechanical buttons for things that actually matter, like the lights and such in the car. It's probably okay to have the touchscreen for the entertainment system. It isn't important, but anything you really need while driving should probably just be a mechanical old-fashioned button. Anyway, um, all right. Well, that's enough of the news. I'm going to stop this. The USB-C cables? Yeah. No, it's much worse than, yes, they, they say some cables will charge your phone more slowly. Uh, that's true, and that is what I found. I found that my home system, if I had the wrong cable, it would charge so slowly that it couldn't keep up with the drain, and I could only charge it by turning it off overnight. I know that some, some of the charging chargers that they, they, they do limit the currents, so... Yes, some of the plugs limit the current, but my problem at home was the cable. It's, it, anyway, this is an important thing to know. The cables are not all the same. They look the same, and they're interchangeable, but they're not all the same. And so, uh, sure it's the cable, not the, not the power plug? Yes, yes, it's really the cable. I, had, I went through all this. My I first know, thought I is... Some, some of the cables, they, they, they're like uh, power cables. Some of them are like data, data power cables. Yes, it's something like power... I don't know how many different kinds there are, but there are several. They're really, not, they're really different, and they don't mark them in any way, so you can't tell. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, they ought to have some label on them or a color so you can tell, but they don't. But normally, the short ones, they have power cables. Uh, I hope that's true. If they could do it, he said the short ones are power cables. If they would do it by length, that would be better than nothing. I haven't found any pattern, and uh, I find that very annoying. <laughs> if you think I need to buy a cable tester or something. it's uh, Anyway, good. All right, let me stop this.